Psalm 57 and verse 1, and the context here is David. Remember David when he got on the outs with Saul? The folks were, uh, everybody loved David, and, and they'd say Saul has killed his hundred thousand, but David has killed the ten thousand. And Saul got real jealous and envious, and Saul was going after him. Saul had had enough, and he was out to kill little David. Uh, Psalm 57, 1, and that's a context here. Uh, Saul was chasing David, and David was hiding from him, and he found a cave to hide in. So I'll read the verse. To the chief musician, Altashib, a victim of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Watch it. Until these calamities be overpassed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. Thank you for your goodness. And Lord, thank you for the good spirit here this morning, Lord, and the heartfelt singing, Lord, and, and the musicians. Uh, Lord, we, we know how that played such a part in, in church throughout history, and it will in Revelation. And uh, Lord, I wish we had 120 trumpets to play along like they did when they brought up the ark, Lord. And I just thank you for these folks who have uh, worked worked on their craft with the music and uh, got skillful in it, Lord. And thank you for let, letting them use that to the glory of God. Lord, help me preach this morning. Help us to understand, Lord, that we just can't stay in the cave forever. We need to come out. Uh, we've got work to do for, for your glory, Lord. And hold me up by the power of your mind. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, earlier earlier now, Jonathan, Saul's son, I love, if you remember, he loved David. His heart, his, his soul was knit with David's. He, he just loved the little David. And he warned David about his father, Saul. It says in 1 Samuel 19, 2, it said, But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, My Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. So Jonathan is giving David a warning here. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself. Man, uh, so David went and he found a cave it was a, and he was hiding out from Saul. It was a rough time. For David. Yeah, in fact, his very life was at stake, so he pulled a disappearing act, and with good cause. And he found his refuge hiding out in a cave, and he cried out to God. Here in our text, he prayed, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge, watch it, until these calamities be overpassed. Now, David in our text, uh, just as David in our text, the church finds ourselves in a similar situation. We had to kind of hide out from this terrible pandemic that was going on. Man, it was killing a lot of people. Killed friends of mine, killed uh, uh, your son, Brother Sparks' son. It, it's bad. And, and, and that uh, for some folks... That, that their health was at risk. They chose to hide out. David did. David hid out in a cave until these calamities be overpassed. Now notice he didn't stay in the cave. Just thought I'd throw that in a minute. Now watch it. Now David uh, referred to all that was against him here as calamities. Uh, yeah, I'll tell this story on Eva's daddy. I've told you here before. Her daddy, Roy, and now he was a character. And I was out at my mailbox one day, and Roy drove by, lived around the corner from me, and he rolled down the window. I said, uh, Uncle Roy, how's it going? He said, I tell you, Tom, this summer's just been one tragic after another. Hey, this year has been one tragic after another. Been a lot of stuff going on. And the church has seen a lot of calamities, and uh, man, it's been crazy. We've seen a, uh, we've gone from a government that was pro-church, pro-Christian, God honoring, to a government that is now anti-Christian, anti-God, and uh, uh, 
control those things which God refers to as abomination. So that's tough. That's tough on the church. We're to pray, but we still pray for our leaders. Uh, we've seen the wrath of, wrath of God, and, and uh, I don't know what else to say about it. This pandemic poured out worldwide over, what is it, 3 million people? Over 3 million people dead from this pandemic. Now, there are about 70 million babies murdered. That might have had something to do with it. The abortion crowd that might have had something to do with it. I don't know. But we've seen the wrath of God poured out in this thing, and the church has not been immune from that. Hey, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. I've had, I know pastors, I've lost pastor friends, have died from this COVID. It almost killed me and Joyce. 40 days and we had to put up with that thing. And I thought that I could die, I die through it and, and went to the emergency room in the middle of it, had to have a CT scan, just watching it. And, and God brought us through that thing, but we didn't know. This natural man is subject to disease and it takes God's intervention many times to help you from it. And you say, well, I don't know about that. I think the church ought to be immune. No, it's not immune from that. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 14, the Bible says, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. Now watch it. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Hey, if you're outside, I don't care if you're a Christian, or a seven-day Adventist, or whatever you are, when the rain falls, if you're sending out the rain, you're going to get wet. That's simple. The Lord said over in Matthew 5, uh, 45, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Watch it. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So deal with it. Good and bad things can happen alike to the just and the unjust. So David here, he prays, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So just like David here, many Christians have had to hide out while this thing was going on. It's been a tough thing. But, you know, it appears that, that we're on the back side of this thing. We're on the back side of this thing. There's going to come a time uh, uh, when we need to come out of our caves and move on for God. I mean, God, hey, we, gotta, we, we have to move on. Uh, he didn't stay. He didn't stay in that cave. Many have, uh, many have taken the, uh, the, the vaccine. Many wouldn't take it, don't trust it, don't believe anything about it. And I understand that because there's more lies on television it's crazy. And I don't take sides on that. It's not my business. Now, country Baptists don't take a lot of dictating to, whether you're a preacher or not. You got enough sense to make up your own mind. Not my business. Uh, I don't care which camp you're in. And, and I'm going to tell all I'm going to tell you, dictate to you, is you need to serve God. You need to have your heart right with God. You need to seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You need to draw an eye unto God, and he will draw an eye unto you. That's what, what I'm supposed to tell you. Preach the word, the Bible says. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. It's what I try to do. Now, normally, if you're kind of new here, normally my messages are real warm and fuzzy, aren't they? Real, uh, but, but today, man, I, I, I got to say it's time to come out of the cave. And the Lord said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Need an amen on that one. All right, we got a few. Woke up a few people with that one. All right. One thing I want you to notice in our text. Now, it is dealer's choice. You can do what you want to do. But God needs his church doing his business. Psalms 57, 1. Here it is, our text to the chief musician, Altasha, Mictham of David when he fled from Saul in the cave. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me. He asked for mercy, that's what we need. For my soul trusteth in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until 
these calamities be overpassed. Isaiah 26, 20, the Bible says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, watch it, as it were for a little moment. He didn't say hide yourself until the undertaker shows up. He said hide yourself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. It's about time we moved on as a church. Now, hey, understand that David did not stay in the cave. When the calamities passed, David came out of the cave, and what did he do? He went on for God. He did what God led him to do. Isaiah said, hide thyself as it was for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Now, what a thing. There comes a time when God's people need to come out of the cave just as David did and go on and serve God. Hey, it's not the time for the church to roll over and play dead. There's country churches all across this nation of ours that are running at about half attendance. Hey, it's time to come out of the cave, church. If you're going to be anything for God, now's the time. Now's the time to do it. If you're ever going to do it, it'd be a good time to do it. Uh, let me tell you why. The devil's crowd is in full swing. Man, they're rocking it. The devil's crowd is. They're getting it every day. Watch your TV. Watch the news medium. If you think the devil's crowd isn't out there working overtime and trying to keep the church divided, sure he is. So, yeah, hey, do you remember the story in Scripture? It's over in 2 Kings. 2 Kings about the four leprous men. Man, there was a big famine going on, and they were outside the gate. Nobody gave them anything to eat. I mean, uh, they were having a rough time, and, and they didn't know what to do. And now uh, the city, when they sat outside the gate, the Syrians had showed up, and they were scared to death. They couldn't go into the city. There's a famine there anyway, and even if they did, the Syrians would probably kill them. Remember that story? That's in uh, 2 Kings chapter 7. And so these four leprous men, they're, they're sitting outside the gate, and they're between a rock and a hard place. They didn't know what to do. They were starving to death. And here's what they said in 2 Kings 7 in verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Duh. Duh. Hey, if we say we will enter into the city... Then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. They went into the city. Uh, let's move on and see what happened. When they stepped up and stepped out, let's see what happened. Uh, verse 5 of 2 Kings 7, verse 5, And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. They were all gone. Nobody was there. Now look. Then it says, And when these lepers came into the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried silver and gold and raiment. Man, they, they hit the jackpot. They hit the Powerball by just stepping out and stepping up, stepping out, however you want to put that. You never know what's going to happen when you start stepping out by faith and trusting God. They decided to take their chances and step up and step out. David decided that finally to take his chances and come out of the cave. I know this COVID thing has been, been terribly stressful. It was for me and my family on both sides of me. My, my two brothers on both sides had, had medical stuff and their wives. That they couldn't handle it if they got it. Couldn't handle it. The body is too, uh, too tough for them to go through it. They stayed home like they should have. My, my, my. We had a 40-day. You know, some folks still aren't quite over it. A lot of folks in our church went through it. Still, I want to encourage you, though, and remind you of the sweet fellowship in the local church. 
and remind you to think on those times. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He said, we took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Watch it, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. God said we should assemble ourselves more, not less. <coughs> hey, surely we're on the back side of this thing. You know what David said in Psalms 122 and verse 1? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I like coming to church. I was at Eva's mama's bedside out at Ripley Crossing one day, and she showed me her Bible. And I, how many years she had that? She told me it was a bunch of years. She said, you know, Tom, when I was a, a little girl, said, I was the only one in my family that really liked going to church. Said, I walked through the a little woods there, said, and walked to church, said, and I loved going to church. She lived to be up in her 90s. God blessed her. My, my, my. The Lord loved the church, and he gave himself for it. We can't let Satan divide it. Hey, if you've been out for a while, let me encourage you to get back. It's time. Time to get back in. And now, if you're watching this, you may be watching this on Facebook. I'm talking about your church, too. You may be watching this on Facebook or YouTube or, or maybe the Psychic Friends Network or, or the Cartoon Channel. Uh, you need to go find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching local church and go to it. God gave himself, the Lord gave himself for the church. He, God wants you back. You know, hey, you know what happened when David left the cave? He was later crowned king of Israel. That's what happened. Hmm. Hey, your church wants you back this morning. God wants you back. And God got your back. Malachi 3.10. I know the context is giving, but it works in every area of the Christian walk. He said, prove me herewith and see. You try God out. You just try him out and see. Prove me herewith and see if, if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing there is not room enough to receive. Step out. Step up. David cried, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. David said in Psalms 59, 16, But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. You notice he said he's going to sing loud. Well, I don't like that loud saying, Well, it's not about you. It's about our Lord. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of trouble. Joyce and I have something to sing about because God's been there for us. We want to be there for him. We want to try to be there for him in spite of the flesh, in spite of the fears, and in spite of the doubts. Step out. Psalm 61, 4 says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. You know about the church, Paul wrote this. Ephesians 4.11 said, And he gave some apostles and some prophets uh, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. That's the local church. Now watch it. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church. You're the church. And God established it. And, and there's something special about the man or the woman or the child that will put themselves under the preaching, the foolishness of preaching in a local church. He is, here, here's a charge that God gives to pastors. A charge God gives to men like David and Brother Jeremiah and Brother Phil Gabbard. And one who, who have, have work in the church. 
Here's what he says. Acts 20, 28. And that's pastors of your church, if you're watching on Facebook or wherever. It's to your pastors too. And the charge that God gave us is this. said, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. Duh. I don't have to just worry about myself. I need to show my concern and my burden for the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's the charge this morning. God wants me to preach the word, to be instant in season, out of season. Satan wants to divide God's people. Don't let him do that. Time to come out of the cave, folks. We need to get things going here again. At one time, we had a good bus ministry going. Our school's doing well. Uh, Jeremiah and Sister Alice and Gabbard are doing, doing a great job there. Our, but we were running 250 most of the time. We're about half halfway there. And I'm not a thing on numbers. Uh, I, I just try to please God. If I please God, whether anybody wants to come and listen to it, that's their business. But if you're hearing this today and you've been kind of waiting this thing out, it would be a good time to come back. God wants you back. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jeremiah, if you, you folks suggest, come.